Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Welcome back to the Nano Hub U course, Thermal Energy at the Nanoscale. I'm Tim Fisher, and we're in the middle of week four of the class. And today we're going to talk about thermal conductance. So far, we have focused our attention on the heat flow rate, Q, or the heat flux. But neither of those are, are terms that we usually calculate right away. In fact, we're much more often people are interested in the thermal conductance or thermal conductivity. Now, the last time in the previous lecture, we talked about the number of modes and we started out with 1D and 2D systems and we calculated this, this thing called the number of modes and that was an integral part to the, the expression for heat flow rate Q and heat flux. And so if we break it down by dimensions in 1D, 2D, and 3D, we see that if we, uh, especially if we're looking at 2D problems, the velocities cancel. So we said that the number of modes is basically a product of the, the size, the cross-sectional area, the vo group velocity or some average of it, and the density of states. And what happens is that group velocity or average group velocity term cancels with a, a velocity term embedded in the density of states. And so now, you, if, especially if you look at the 2D and 3D result, you see that essentially the, the number of modes is a width for two dimensions or an area for three dimensions divided by a wavelength because K goes as one over wavelength. So in 2D, it's K is one over wavelength and we're looking at a W divided by the wavelength. And so that's going to give us a number of wavelengths in that two-dimensional cross-section. For 3D, K is squared. And so we have an area divided by the wavelength squared. And that also is going to give us a, a dimensionless quantity that represents kind of the number of these modes that can exist in this cross-sectional cross area. So if we look at electrons, so far everything we've done for the number of modes M has been for phonons. Uh, we'd like to, of course, also make sure that we cover electrons. And we're going to do one small extra thing this time. We're going to actually reference the energy states for the electrons to the bottom of the conduction band. So this term E sub C that's showing up now, that's the, the, the energy at the bottom of the conduction band. And that's what you'll see often in, um, in uh, electrical transport theory. And Professor Lundstrom's textbook uh, does a very good job of this. So we won't belabor the point. What we've done here is we've calculated the number of modes in energy space for electrons in 1D, 2D, and 3D. And we've substituted the parabolic dispersion relation to calculate the density of states. And at the end of the day, we can do the same thing we did for phonons, that is to calculate a rate of heat flow. This is for the, the heat flow that's carried by electrons. And it looks very much the same as the integral that we had for phonons, except for now we're integrating in energy space instead of frequency space. And so there's an extra, there's an extra um, H bar that shows up and, uh, and we, we can, um, uh, we can convert between the two. I don't want you to think that you couldn't do an energy space integral to calculate the phonon heat transfer rate or uh, the, a frequency integral to calculate the electron heat transfer rate. But uh, this is by convention. This is the way it's typically done. So I'm going to introduce now the concept of thermal conductance. And we've seen bits and pieces of it. But thermal conductance is a very important attribute of a system. It's not quite a property. Uh, like thermal conductivity is, at least for uh, bulk materials. Uh, but it's a very useful concept. It's the ratio of heat flow rate to the temperature difference that's driving the heat flow. And so it's a, it's a normalized uh, efficiency of, of heat transfer. The higher the conductance, the more heat uh, is flowing through for a given temperature difference. And so when we do this calculation, this is an important, um, an important calculation to make because it, it, it will lead us into a, expressions for thermal conductivity, for example, in, our, in our, uh, our reservoir device, reservoir structure. For phonons, essentially what we do is, for phonons and electrons, is we take the temperature derivative of the expression for Q. 
That's the heat flow rate. And the only thing, generally speaking, in the, in the expression that is temperature dependent is the distribution function. And there's some nuances where you could see some temperature dependencies of things like the, uh, like the uh, chemical potential. Uh, there may be some temperature dependencies of other terms uh, in the densities of states. But to first order, certainly the only thing that's temperature dependent in the Q integral is going to be your distribution function. Now, we've seen those temperature derivatives before when we had to calculate specific heat. So they should be somewhat familiar. What I've done here is uh, I've plotted the derivative of this of the distribution function. This is the temperature derivative of the Bose-Einstein distribution function. And I've normalized it by temperature to make it dimensionless. So it's, it's actually the partial derivative of F sub BE with respect to temperature multiplied by temperature so that we can make that dimensionless. And we're plotting that against the normalized energy that's h bar omega divided by the thermal energy, kBT. And if we look at this, we see, first of all, I think it's important to understand magnitudes. And we see that we have a very high magnitude of this derivative as the, as the argument h bar omega over kBT goes to zero. So that as that scaled energy goes to zero, this derivative goes uh, to its maximum. And as the argument goes to a value of 1 or so, as the scaled energy takes a value of 1, that means that the phonon energy is roughly equal to the thermal energy, kBT. You see that there's a precipitous drop-off in, in our uh, derivative. And so that's important, too. If we want to calculate integrals, we'd like to know, kind of what, where the integral the integrand is large and where it's small and we might be able to neglect things and make some approximations uh, to, achieve, to achieve uh, analytic results. For electrons, situation is a little bit different. Uh, we're t again, we're plotting that derivative of the distribution function normalized by temperature to make it dimensionless. And I think the first thing that stands out in this graph is that it, it goes positive and negative. And the reason for that is we actually are spanning across energy space uh, that's, that's intersecting the chemical potential. So we're going below the chemical potential and above the chemical potential. You'll notice that the argument here is the scaled energy, E minus mu, divided by the thermal energy. And that's why it can go negative. Now, if you're worried that we're going to start having negative heat flows and um, maybe violating the second law of thermodynamics, don't worry, most of the time, if not always, this term is multiplied in the rest of the integral with E minus mu. So that negative part of this derivative is actually, actually comes back and becomes positive once it's multiplied by E minus mu because it's only negative when E minus mu is negative. The other thing that stands out in this graph is that uh, the magnitude is much smaller. So the, the magnitude of this derivative, which again is shows up in our expression for the thermal conductance, the magnitude is much smaller. You'll, if you recall back to the phonon graph, uh, it started out at a thousand, a value of a thousand, this scaled derivative of the distribution function, whereas uh, this one peaks at about 0.25, right? A very low value, maybe a little bit lower than that even. Um, it also goes to zero at the origin. And that's because the, at, at, at when energy equals the uh, chemical potential, I mentioned this in a previous lecture, what's happening is that the carrier, if it has exactly the chemical potential, it might move um, and, and carry heat with it, but because we have to maintain some other, uh, we have to maintain a, a number balance for electrons, for example, it needs to be replaced by an electron, and the average replacement energy of an electron is going to be the chemical potential. And that's why you see like no effect of, uh, uh, no thermal effect for electrons that are exactly at the chemical potential energy. All right, I just, uh, at, at the end here, what I want to do is, is to show and to discuss where these terms uh, appear. And I'm going to talk a bit in the next lecture about spectral conductance. It's a very important concept. It, it allows us to look a little bit deeper into the distribution of where, where energy is distributed in the, the heat transfer process amongst the carriers. So we're going to talk a lot about spectral conductances. 
and they're basically just the integrands of the integral for conductance, for the total conductance. And you'll see there's some very familiar terms. We have our number of modes, we have our carrier energy, our transmission function, which I realize we haven't really done much with yet. That's going to be a whole nother week. Um, and then the temperature derivative of the distribution function. So right now, I think we have a pretty good handle on three out of the four of these terms. And we'll do some simplification so that we can actually get some real results um, by assuming an ideal transmission. And uh, we'll do that in the next lecture. Thanks.